All in all, it's just a rubber dick with some balls. You guys have your benchies. I've got my tool logos. We are not the same. The first thing I printed on my Elegoo Neptune 3 was this. Or one of these. I think this one actually... And yeah, this is the one. You can tell by the massive elephant foot I've got. So, whenever I test out some new trickery, I do another one. So this one was done with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. A little bit of wackiness going on here. I gotta see what kind of settings are in Cura, but otherwise I may be switching over to Prusa Slicer. I hear good things. But I was testing out some TPU with the 0.6 nozzle and figured what the hell. I've also done some strategic branding, if you will. But I digress. The purpose of this video is to show you a quick down and dirty way of checking some square and parallel and other types of adjustments that may need to be done to your Elegoo Neptune 3 or a similar piece of equipment. Somebody on one of the forums or one of the Facebook groups asked about his table not being level or square to his machine, and I said half-heartedly, well, just take a precision square and check the, the Z-axis rails of your gantry in relation to the T-supports at the bottom. I checked mine, and it's out by a mile and a half. So, I figured what better time and what better way to make some more lovely, delicious content but to kind of give you guys a quickie on how to square up your, your Z. So I've got this thing on the tripod. The one thing, or another thing that you want to do, is just check to make sure that your Z rails are parallel to one another by taking a precision straight edge. In my case, the lovely but way overpriced Stuart McDonald products. Put it up against the extrusions. And then check against the faces. That when, when you are making contact with one side, the other side's perfectly flat and flush against there. Right now, mine seems to be that way, which is nice. But once I start beating and tweaking this thing around, it's probably going to not be the case. So without further ado, let's start off by checking squareness of the bottom rail in relation to the Z, or the Z for you foreign folks. I've got a precision square, got it up against the Z axis down rail. If I shine a light back behind here, you can see that there is plenty of shadow. As I get up towards the top, if I were to push this against here, not so much of the shadow. But coming down, there it is. So to alleviate that, when you assemble your machine, we all know because we've done it, there's four bolts, two on this side and two on the other side, that secure the gantry to the bottom rail. If the ends of the extrusion are not cut square, then you're going to get this type of situation. If you have access to machine shop equipment, your best bet would be to put these into a milling machine and just lightly skim these so that they are milled perfectly square in a milling machine. I personally have access to milling machines, but I also don't feel much like ripping my entire machine apart. I just got it, and let's be uh, let's be reasonable, and truth be told, there's going to be a couple of more mods going on with this thing in the near future, so I figure this is a good way just to get it square for now, and if 
I get to the point where I'm ripping the entire thing apart, then we will worry about it and we'll square them up. For you home gamers in the group, if you are interested in doing this, just get yourself some aluminum foil or aluminum foil. And what you'll do is you'll cut this into little pieces, little strips, the same width as the rail, 40 millimeters. Cut them and then fold them up so that you have varying thicknesses of foil. Essentially, you're making little shims out of them. And all you're going to do, put this down so it's not rattling around so much. You're going to loosen these screws. You're going to take those shims, slide it up underneath whichever side has the daylight on the bottom. So if you put the square against yours and you've got daylight at the top, it means that the rail is tilted this way. So you'll put the shim on the back side to push it more this way forward when you tighten it. In my case, I've got the majority of the daylight at the bottom, so I'm going to loosen up the screws on the bottom each side. I'm going to shim here, and I'm going to shim the other side until I've got no more daylight. So I got my strip cut. I'm not sure how much I'm going to need yet. I do have quite a bit of quite a bit of gap at the bottom. If I take my trusty dial caliper. I hit that on here. I'll see that. You'll see that. The material that I'm using, the foil, is roughly one thousandths of an inch, which is 0 0.025 millimeter, 0 0.0254 millimeter. You take your scraper, use it to kind of smooth out the surface a little bit. Pinch the material so that it's square, and then rip. And that'll give us a nice straightish edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, we're just making shims out of it. So from that point, we can take it and we can start rolling. Again, we want to make this about a 6 millimeter fold. Another way to do this is if you have a set of feeler gauges, what you can do is you can use the feeler gauges underneath to get the exact number that you need for your particular scenario and you can use that to build your foil stack or if you have access to shim stock you can use the shim stock instead cut the shim stock to what you need stack it up and then you're pretty much done so i folded this a few times Smooth it out a little bit with my fingers. Just make sure that it's flat. Hit it with the caliper again. You can see that it's about 10 thousandths or 0.25 millimeter. Again, not really sure how much this thing is going to require. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just loosen up the bolts on the gantry on the underside. Let's see how much skew I've got in this thing. So I've got the light on just to not so much blind you or make you envious that I have excellent lighting on my machine now, but to kind of show you that there's no daylight anymore. There's a little bit of a bow in the actual extrusion, but ultimately this side is done. So what I wound up having to do was just trial and error with the foil. Make it thick, loosen it, square it up, put in, hold it so that it's square. Put the shim inside of here and see if it fits, to see if it catches. If it's thick enough, it w it'll catch, but it won't go in. So you just keep peeling off one by one by one, do the same thing. Do it like a feely gauge. Unfortunately, my feely gauges are a little too thick. That feeler gauge set is for setting up guitars. Thank you, Stuart McDonald, for your contribution of two thick feeler gauges. But anyway, I've got this to where it's perfectly square up to 
the extent of my square, which I believe is about seven-ish inches or so. Maybe a little bit less, six inches. But this square up to here should translate further up and be yeah, close enough. Gonna do the same thing to the other side. This side will this the other side will probably be a little bit more difficult only because of the home sensor. So I just have to take the home sensor off. Hopefully they didn't use T-nuts behind that because that would really suck. And just get the square in so that it's up against here. I also want to check the squareness of the table in relation to the extrusions because, again, subassembly, this rail here is bolted to a cross rail underneath here. This is like an I shape underneath, and this sits on top of that would-be I shape. So there's two bolts that hold this together onto there. So it would be the same thing. See where the table is in relation to the rails. And then have to shim this up a little bit here or there. Technically speaking, the auto bed leveling should help with that. But it's never going to be perfect unless you make it perfect. I'm really worried about there being T-nuts behind these. I have an assembly model of the Neptune 2 from the Elegoo website, but they don't use the sensor. They use a regular limit switch. As a side note, do yourself a favor and loosen these two screws here because that gives you plenty of play without it having any effect on the rest of the system. So now I've got movement here that I can use to adjust down at the bottom. When I tighten that, I just tighten the top and it should be fine. You know, sometimes you just got to YOLO it. <laughs> I took a stab at it and turns out that the extrusion is tapped. The things that boggle my mind. So I'm just basically going to do the same thing over here. Got my square ready to go. Lay it up against. Look for the daylight. Right now I've got daylight at the top. Not much. So if I hold it in place like that, I should be able to start checking my shim stack. And then after I, I just do trial and error, I put a shim underneath, I snug it, I check it, and if it's good, then it's good. If it's not good, I try again. So there we go. It's in there. The camera angle, you can kind of see it, but once everything's back together, it won't be as obvious. It's tight. Took about the same amount of shim as the other side. I'll just snug these screws down here. I'll just be careful snug. Careful snug. I've got my Z-axis up pretty high, but the... The bearing, uh, the bearing houses or bearing housings float a little bit too. So I've got it up pretty high. So if there was any kind of movement up in the top here and it was going to bind the screw, the Z being up high is going to keep it more relative to where it wants it to be when the gantry is moving up and down. So there's a lot more of this that can be done. Like I said, there's the bottom portion of it for the table in relation to the Z. That was off a pretty good amount. It's probably still off a little bit, but now I've got step one pretty much buttoned up. And from there, I can move on to the underside of here and get this all squared away and what have you. Because of, the, because of my linear rail conversion, if I really wanted to, I could crack these free and I can adjust the linear rails, but... I use those alignment jigs, and the alignment jigs are close to the point where there shouldn't be that much movement here. So that'll conclude this video. I hope it gives you a little bit of insight. For you old guys looking for Linux CNC stuff, I apologize. I will get back to that. I, I 
have a lot of things planned, but I'm having fun. So <laughs> if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the content, please like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or comments for anything that you'd like to see in upcoming videos, please let me know. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.